I, as, as Michelle said, I, I manage GAIN's innovative finance program. So it's not innovation around technology, but it's innovation around engaging with the private investment community to channel more investment capital into the fight against malnutrition. Uh, we manage several different initiatives within this program, and I'm going to speak about one of them today, the Access to Nutrition Index. So as a bit of context, uh, first, we, I think, all in this room recognize the key role that the private sector plays in addressing malnutrition. Moreover, we think that those companies, those food and beverage companies, that are taking a proactive stance on addressing malnutrition are better positioned to take advantage of trends in the industry and are better investment opportunities. And that's why this sits within the Innovative Finance Program. What we're trying to do is build an assessment system of food and beverage companies based on their nutrition practices to assess companies against best practices, international guidelines, policies, et cetera, that revolve around what the private sector can do to reduce malnutrition. So we're looking at food and beverage manufacturers and their performance in the nutrition sector. And importantly, we're trying to build a tool that can engage with different stakeholder groups. Up on the slide, I have the investor group as one of those. Uh, there's quite a large segment of the investment community now that is looking at the private sector and at companies and what kind of social impact that they're having and trying to allocate more capital towards those companies that are more socially responsible. To date, the investment community does not have a tool to assess food and beverage companies on their nutrition practices. We aim to make the Access to Nutrition Index that tool. Should also say that this initiative is being incubated again with the support of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and the Wellcome Trust. Uh, we've been working for the past two years to develop this initiative, and we've been building it off of successes and best practices among indexes, ratings, and ranking systems. We've researched over 30 of these to learn from their best practices, and we're hoping to incorporate as many of those practices as possible into this index. What will this index cover? We're looking at the entire scope of malnutrition, from undernutrition through to obesity. We're also just taking one segment of the food and beverage value chain. We're looking at food and beverage manufacturers. We recognize that other links in the value chain play an incredibly important role in addressing malnutrition, including retailers, upstream suppliers, fast food restaurants. It's a lot to handle with one index. So for this first version of the index, we're focused on manufacturers alone. We're also looking at global multinational food and beverage companies, as well as major regional and local food and beverage companies. We're building this index in two parts. We're creating a core index that's looking at the 20, 25 of the world's largest food and beverage companies. And we're building what we're calling spotlight indexes or component indexes, one each for Mexico, South Africa, and India. Each of those countries suffers from a double burden of malnutrition, which is to say high rates of undernutrition as well as growing rates of obesity. And we're going to be looking at 10 of the largest food and beverage companies in each of those markets. And that would include both regional and local food and beverage companies, as well as local units of multinational corporations. Now, I want to give you a brief overview of how we want to assess food and beverage companies, and then let you know how you can be involved in this process. So we've been working to develop a methodology that the broad structures on the screen that's based on very similar methodologies used by rankings and rating systems in other sectors. So we're looking at the highest level at nutrition governance, what are companies' policies and commitments and leadership positions around nutrition, then we're looking at how they put those commitments and policies into practice, both in terms of how they influence consumer behavior through issues like marketing and nutrition education programs, but also how they put those into practice through formulating and delivering affordable and appropriate products. Now that overview, those three components I just discussed, we'll be using in our core index, as well as in the three indexes focused on each of these three emerging market countries. In addition, in India, Mexico, and South Africa, we're attempting to build something we're calling a product profile, which is looking at a sample of the products that each of these food and beverage companies puts on the shelves to see what are they doing to provide access to more nutritious foods and beverages that are affordable and accessible to those who need them. Once this index is built, we will have a scoring system. 
Each company will receive an overall score, as well as a score that's broken down between what they are doing to address obesity, as well as what they are doing to address undernutrition. The scoring will also be further disaggregated into various activities that companies undertake, such as marketing, research and development, and product formulation. Now, just yesterday, we put this methodology, the first draft of it, online for a public consultation that will last until December 2nd. This consultation is broken into modules that are shown on this screen. You can choose to answer one or all of these modules. But the point is, we are looking for your input, your good ideas, uh, your views on how this methodology can be strengthened and improved. In order to participate in this, many of you, I think, have already received an email with a link to this, but you can also go to our website. It's www.accesstonutrition.org. In the middle of that page is a yellow box with a link to the online survey. We'd encourage you to participate in the survey, also to circulate this to colleagues, contacts, networks who might also be interested in participating in this initiative. Now, what happens next? Well, after December 2nd, we're going to take on board the feedback that we received on the methodology, improve it, strengthen it, and then do research on the food and beverage companies against that methodology. To do this research, we've hired an independent third-party research firm, MSCI ESG Research, which is one of the world's best investment research firms. They will be doing both desk-based research on the materials that food and beverage companies put into the public sector, as well as face-to-face -face interviews with those companies to fill in the gaps that are left. They will then generate a score and a ranking for each of these companies. Now, we hope to have a ranking prepared by the middle of next year. At the same time, another important task of ours is to build an institution that will house this index. It will not be housed at GAIN. Rather, it will be taken forward by an independent institution. And our view is trying to build this institution in a sustainable way so that it can continue to produce this index on a regular basis into the future. And that that index can continue to evolve to take advantage of growing knowledge in the nutrition sector and to be updated based on evolving best practices and international policies and guidelines that emerge. Again, we'd be very happy if all of you could participate in this online consultation. If you just go to our website and click on the link and share that with your colleagues, it would be much appreciated. And we hope that working with you, we can make this a very strong initiative that provides encouragement to the food and beverage sector to improve their practices, as well as a tool that's useful to them to benchmark themselves against best practices and their competition. Uh, thank you very much.